the grounds! By the center! Quick! March! Jesus is king. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, as they say in Canada. You still have is that the, what we you, say here? Yes, that's what you say in Canada. And okay. you still have the American flag behind your right ear. So good job. Well, good you know. job. Kennedy, welcome once again to the Terror of Demons show with co-host and author of the book, Kennedy Hall. Kennedy, the uh, the hammer of the hammer of uh, charismatics, apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. So, uh, Kennedy, how you doing, brother? I'm living the dream, man. I just make making more friends every day, talking about things you're not supposed <laughs> yeah. to talk about. How to win friends and influence people by Kennedy Hall. Excellent. So, uh, wh- what do you have planned for the rest of your uh, charismatic series? What's next for you? Uh, well, you know what? I'm probably going to write a book on it. I'm uh, I'm actually just about to hand in my manuscript on the modernism book to Sophia. So I think it'll come out in March. I think it's like a 10 month thing, if if not earlier. I'm not sure. You never know with publishers, right? But um but then I'll probably write a charismatic book because I'm just doing a lot of research. And um right now I'm actually kind of getting deep into how there was a heresy in the first couple centuries. It kind of lasted through the time of Augustine. It's not really clear because these these kind of groups kind of change their names and things. Um, but it was the heresy of Montanism. And uh it was uh, actually followed in his later life by Tertullian, one of those sadder cases of one of the would-be church fathers like Origen, who kind of went off the rails at some point, but otherwise had lots of great things before that. And um, basically, there was this guy named Montanus uh, who believed he was basically the incarnation of the Holy Ghost and uh, had these prophets, and they would speak in strange languages, and they would lay the gift of, have give gifts by laying hands, and they would uh, go into ecstasies, and they would you know, you know, whatever. And, uh, and it was condemned, of course. And, uh, there's a lot of similarities between that and the charismatic. And also, uh, I was talking about this on my channel and my sub stack. So if people want more, I'm going more in depth on certain things for subscribers at mere tradition.substack.com. And, um, in the 1700s, there was a group called the Camisards who were a Huguenot sort of group and they all apparently had the gift of tongues and not like the you know hushamama mushamama tongues but actual languages this was recorded and they and that was for them an affirmation of the proof of their sect against rome and um so i went into the research on augustine and aquinas and apparently the devil can actually uh through what uh augustine would call sort of something like trickery because demons have high intelligences it's not really a miracle but it seems like a miracle so anyway the point being is that there's a lot and and obviously that group was heretical and against rome so it's not of god of course um so there are plenty examples of this stuff long before the pentecostal movement started in 1900 so even just the historical basis for the renewal is based in fiction um there's plenty of tongue groups and baptism the holy spirit Mm. groups that were just lost to history so there's lots there that i'm kind of uh, combing through Ah, well, that, yeah. that's very interesting. So look, look for divorce from uh, TKR against the charismatic world. Uh, so we're going to talk about Harrison Bucker and why Harrison Bucker is excellent. Uh, <laughs> he's won back-to-back Super Bowls. There, I think there was a was a three Super Bowls. He's won three of them. He's won three. Three. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, the, two years ago, it, he kicked the winning field goal 
And I remember this yes. two years ago. He was he he missed one during the Super Bowl earlier that day, but then he w- kicked the winning. It was uh, fantastic. So, yeah. Even though the Lions didn't make it the Super Bowl, but, well, uh, also I did a video on Butker. It's a joke video. Most people understood the joke, and it was uh, I for it was called Harrison Butker. I forgive you because he's been such a jerk just kicking out my bills from the playoffs and beating them last minute and things like that so i'm like man oh man i can't like this guy he's like my mortal enemy the bills are finally good after 20 years since doug flutie and finally they get you know josh allen they're doing something this guy keeps you know sending us into the off season but i said you know your speech was so good i guess i have to forgive you harrison so not only have your your lions suffered but my bills are rivals with the chiefs and the afc so anyway <laughs> Yeah, I, I won't. I won't mention the Lions anymore. But let, let's read uh, some of these these texts here from Budker. He sure. says this quote: "For the ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your own lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now, about to cross this stage, and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career?" Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. Kennedy, thoughts so far? I mean, he's a fascist. Uh, You know, he he says it's great. He says it's great that they... The F word uh, on YouTube. Oh, boy. Yeah. He says it's great that they... uh, graduated so clearly he thinks all women should never learn how to read um and then he talks about the fact that they might even have honors in their secular careers which means he really 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 hates women and uh and then he said that uh, the most important thing or not even the most important thing he said the majority of you are most excited you know about your marriage and the children you bring into this world this is what's so crazy about this is like it's not even that Like, I'm not criticizing Harrison at all here. I'm just saying if I wanted to, like, judge this through the most sort of, quote unquote, like, red-pilled pro-masculinity movement stuff you could say, it's not even that. Like, he's not saying you all wasted your money. He's not saying throw those degrees out and get in the kitchen and be barefoot and pregnant. He's just saying, I imagine most of you are most excited about the more important thing, which is marriage and children which i think is just obvious i mean you know like i mean there are some definitely some women who are and men if you can call them that who are really really imbibed with the marxist feminist spirit and they you know they they fall into a really awful wicked place but most people even women with careers i mean they'll tell you that okay it's great that you know sure I got a promotion or something but I I think they probably look forward more to you know spending time with their kids and reading bedtime stories and singing nursery rhymes and those sorts of things like that's what brings people the most joy in life I think I think any sane person could agree with Harrison's statement like you don't even have to be a traditionalist just you accomplish something that's great you might accomplish other things that's great too but you're probably thinking the most important thing is family which is like a, it's a basic American value. You hear this from the, you know, like you hear this from the evangelicals, you hear this from the presidents, you hear this from even Obama probably 15 years ago. You know, it's just like nothing's more important than holding that little baby in your arm and isn't that special. Like it's it's not even controversial in the slightest. And I, I want to emphasize the the fact that this this goes for men too. Like if, if yeah. you're if you're so excited about your career, like. No, how, how many men? I would I would guess the majority of you men are excited about winning the heart of your sweetheart and marrying her and having children, and all of this career stuff is secondary to that. Um, even right. the I mean, you and I, Kennedy, we both have the blessing to actually work at home. We stay we're stay at home dads, you know. We're we're working here at, at home, which is awesome. I love I love being here with my kids. It's, it's fantastic. Do, not always focus uh, as much on my work as I'd like, but, uh, g- you know, getting things done. But it's, it's, it's a great blessing to be with the family, be with the kids. This is yeah. fantastic. 
Um, <clears throat> here's what he continues. He says, I can tell you that my beautiful life, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and a mother. I'm on the stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, grace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. <laughs> yeah, it's applause, funny. Applause he, lasting 18 seconds. He didn't even say the most important title of all. Which he totally could have said, and I would have said that's good for you. I, I think it is the most important title for for you know, unless for the average woman, not not including obviously religious life and so forth, but just for a lay woman, yes, I, I would I would even say like I would have I would have loved it if he said the most. And I'm not again I'm not criticizing, but he didn't even say that is the point. He said one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. So even if you're some, I don't know, like sort of liberal Christian who thinks that, you know, education is God's gift for women or something like that. Higher education, that is. All he said was that one of the most important titles is homemaker. Again, who, who, who that is sane? Even Bill Maher defended the guy. Even Whoopi Goldberg, like, talk about, you know, satanic people. They even defended the guy saying, he's a Catholic. He's speaking at a Catholic college. It's a conservative Catholic environment, which they understand the distinctions. And he's saying that one of the most important things that women can do is be homemakers, which everyone of any sense up until 10 seconds ago would say is a good thing, you know? So it, yeah, it just, it's interesting how this whole thing has played out because we are so far gone from sanity into the depths of Marxist gobbledygook that anyone who says anything that is acceptable to a centrist mainline Protestant, the idea that having children is more important than having money, the idea that being a homemaker is one of the best things you could ever do. This is basic stuff. The idea that that's said is akin to The Handmaid's Tale for these crazy right. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you don't know what the Handmaid's Tale is, count yourself lucky because it's it's just a weird weirdo um, dystopian. Uh, I think it's a novel, but it's yeah. like, um, it, but it is the 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 caricature that's um, this. There is this anti. There's this. There is a, a like a true anti woman, anti Mary spirit you know, among the Protestants, where there is a sort of Calvinism where it's also there Islam. is actually. Yeah, in Islam too. There's like this tyranny over women and, and really a real subjugation, like women can't inherit property and those sorts of things, um, which is not the Catholic way. Um, and uh, also, this is, and, and he mentions she is the primary educator of, of our children. She's the one who ensures I never let football or my business become a distraction from that of a husband and a father. And this is one of the, the great things, I think, at least I, and I can speak, say personally for me too, like uh, getting married really, it grounds a man in reality, keeps, mm -hmm. keeps a man grounded in the persons that they're bound to because are, are very much, I think men are often tempted towards too much abstraction and not enough concrete reality. There was an interesting uh, comment made by Patrick Deneen. He was, I think it was a quoting a French philosopher where he said that, all the liberal philosophers, going back to like John Locke and Rousseau, they're all uh, single. They're, they're not married and they don't have children. Or if they do have children, they're neglected their children. And so all mm -hmm. these philosophies are just anti-family, anti-children. <laughs> and they exist in this abstract world that doesn't actually exist because they're, they're constructing this thing. You know, like the whole liberal notion of individualism is completely anti-reality because every single person mm -hmm. is born into a family. That's how we <laughs> exist, guys. It's a... You know, man and woman love each other, and then there's a child. That's it's you're you're already communal. There's no such thing as individualism. This this mm -hmm. like state of nature. This whole concept of oh, there's a state of nature. Then we have to uh, put this all together. But um, <clears throat> he, he what he's saying he he's pro homemaker, which is ultimately pro children. Mm -hmm. It's pro 
children. Yeah. It also, you know, I was thinking about this. <coughs> excuse me. We touched on it briefly when you and uh, Eric Sammons and I did a show on like the role of men in uh, sort of against response to the sort of let's let's call it kind of short sighted, narrow minded, overly zealous red pill movement, so to speak. And uh, one of the things that I've been chewing on is, you know, we, we live in a time of, of reactionary opinions. You know, everything is a reaction to something egregious. And obviously in reactions, there's lots of truth. Of course, feminism is bad. Of course, Marxism is bad. All these isms that are not Catholicism are no good. So we react against these things. But we really are all a kind of a product of our generation and our time period. So we kind of have a short-sighted view of history. You know, I always go back to the Bible, as I think we're probably supposed to do that. And, uh, you know, when, when Proverbs and, and the, you know, when it's talking about the ideal woman, um, liberals will interpret that and be like, look, she's a, she's a boss, babe. She's out there, you know, moving money around. It's like, well, no, you're actually misunderstanding the nature of what we would call work and career. Uh, we have this completely artificial way of life since the Industrial Revolution, essentially, where People have become producers and not creators. You know, people have become employees and not artisans. And so the idea that you learn a technical skill, that you go and employ that skill in a certain enterprise or industry, and then that industry produces certain things that people pay for, and then your contributions are based on a sort of gradient scale of how much you're worth based on how much you produce. This is a completely... This is ahistorical. This this doesn't exist until 200 years ago, really, at all in the world. And the separation of work and home is a completely arbitrary and artificial separation. So one of the, one of the issues with even talking about this, women working and so forth, is that even men have, even men are a part of this conveyor belt system that is, is artificial. It's not, it's anti-human. It's not human. It's not in line with the rhythms of life. It's not in line with the rhythms of the church. It's not in line with the rhythms of, of, uh, uh, the seasons even, you know, and historically, I mean, 90% of people were agrarian. So there were downtimes and, and work and things like that. And all women and men, all men and women were some sort of artisan, you know, in Proverbs 31, it talks about, you know, she, whatever the flax and the looms and things like that, you know, making it, the textiles and the, and the fabrics and things, and then bringing those things to market. But it also talks about her having servants. Because you know, everybody, anybody of any means had servants. Even in that uh, book, Pride and Prejudice, you know, it's, they're sort of on the lower rung of the sort of middle class, but they even still hire a cook and servants because everyone had that. So women today in the sort of traditional world or the conservative Catholic world, there's this notion that while well, the traditional way of life is dad goes to work, and he brings home X amount of thousands of dollars a year. And mom stays home and she homeschools the kids. And of course, that's a much better thing to do than what is currently expected in our society. Nonetheless, it's still not historical. It's still not, it's still a, it's still a, it's still a reaction, a necessary reaction. I'm not, I'm not saying don't we homeschool. You know, I, I work, my wife homeschool, like we do that. But, but it's also just not the way people lived. And I was reading... I've never read the Catechism of Trent from start to finish. I've obviously cited it many times, but I have this big copy from Tan, and I was like, I'll put it on my nightstand, and I'll start with the introduction, and I'll just go through the book. So I was reading the introduction the other night, and I don't know if every edition of the, the Council of the Catechism is the same, but the one I have, the introduction goes through how free education through the parish is as old as like the 5th and 6th century, and it has these documents of all these different dioceses exhorting their priests that they have to at their parishes, they have to have education for the potential priests before they had the seminary system, they were educated differently, and they have to have education in the basics of the faith and English, and reading and writing for even boys and girls uh, uh, that were children. And um, so no one was a homeschooler. No one was like, okay, husband's going to go to the, be the blacksmith, he's going to go sell everything, I'm going to be at home and I'm going to teach my... No one did that. So there's just so many things going on in our modern life that are so unnatural, anti-human, and artificial 
that it's very difficult to draw these arbitrary lines about what is objectively acceptable and what is not. Of course, I believe there are massive dangers in higher education for men and women. And therefore, I believe that girls should be shielded from that as much as possible because of the temptations to adopt these extremely anti-human lifestyles and so forth. And men maybe have a better reason to go to learn certain skills because of the economy that requires it and so forth. But even there, I can't, I can't draw a hard and fast line and say no technical skills or no education is ever necessary because circumstances are very complex in different places. Um, and, and, and we're all sort of dealing with this anti-human modernity that is completely arbitrary and artificial. So, so even talking about this, like I think Harrison did a very good job because you can't even really be as black and white as people want you to be. And I'm saying this as a guy who wrote a book on masculinity and I exhort women to be homemakers. I think it's a good thing. But, but it really, it's just really not that simple as much as people want it to be because there's so many factors involved. Yeah, there's not a... <clears throat> um... There is not a an intrinsic evil to women working, obviously. <laughs> uh, women need to, I mean, I mean, I would even say that there is a, uh, Adam and Eve are given the garden and God says, work the garden to both Adam and Eve. There's a work that women do. Homemaking is work. And there, but you, as you said, there's, there's not really that, that, um, that distinction between work and home. It's all organically connected. And so the woman doing work, and this also goes into, you know, men should also be doing housework, doing the homemaking as well. We're a part of this. It's not like we should not ever do the laundry because that's the woman's job. That's just sort of an artificial imposition. Everyone's working together in, in one home economy. And I think that the women help help with dealing with this dehuman society because women have uh, femininity has this power to humanize because uh, a woman's great gift is to receive people in love to grow love because obviously her body grows a human being but it's also in in the receptivity of people the receptivity of uh, hospitality these are things that help men get back into reality get back into the reality of human life and so this is we, we need our women to help lead the way in this sense because they're really leading us to the human to to this re reality and um this is not something that undermines the patriarchy but true catholic women uh support the patriarchy by being more feminine and being embracing that uh vocation that reality that that makes the men want to be more masculine that, that makes us want to go out and die for them and work for them because they're, they're we guy we're 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 defending and we're providing for this this beautiful home that they have created for us. Yeah, and and again, no one confused my meaning. Like, <clears throat> I am by no means encouraging anyone, really, most people, to go off and get into the conveyor belt system of this or that education, especially not women. I'm just saying that the lines are not as clear as people would like them to be in all circumstances, and you know. <clears throat> I was thinking about this before we came on today and you know, like I have two daughters, we have six kids so far and, and I have two, two little girls and <clears throat> we're definitely not pushing them. I mean, Clementine's a year and a half old, so she's not doing anything, but we're not pushing them into the conveyor belt system, so to speak. But even if her, even if Clover, let's say, you know, she's six years old, her goal one day is just to be a mommy and whatever, or she wants to be a religious sister. It's like, well, if she's not sure what to do and she's 18 or 19 years old and she's very academically inclined, like I would encourage her to consider going to somewhere like the St. Mary's College and getting like a classical great books kind of education or Thomas Aquinas College or Benedict, one of these good schools um, with good healthy environments, good Catholic environments, modesty and, and all those sorts of things put in place. I mean, I, would, I think that I would encourage that because if she's going to homeschool her kids, well, I mean she's got to have, she's got to know what she's doing for one. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's in education. That's more than just common sense knowledge. I mean, it's, it's tough to school the older grades, uh, after the age of, you know, 10 or 11. I mean, you're getting into stuff that, I mean, I don't remember much of my math class from grade seven or eight, if I'm being honest, you know, the integers and the quadratic formulas in grade nine. And I don't remember much of that stuff at all. So, I mean, there's going to be some level of expertise that's required. So just practically speaking, that might be useful, but also, you know, you're going to live on this earth for however many years you live in an anti-christian culture 
where everything is Kantian and Hegelian and whatever Cartesian, and it's just completely against the philosophical foundation of 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 the West, so to speak, of Christendom. That having you know having a, a, a being inundated with the literature of the Western canon and having that exposed and having expository presentations of that from experts in it, where you can really cogitate on the meanings and come to grips with the the history of your civilization. That's extremely useful for reasons that have nothing to do with professionalism. It's useful for reasons that just have to do with your intellectual development in order to be able to understand your history. And, and that is something that you can get great benefit out of from going to particular places. So, you know, it's, 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 it's like, take the career side out of it. There is a huge benefit to a sound good in the real sense of the term, a good liberal arts education, um, which, which only some of these Catholic schools really, and some Protestant places like, uh, Hillsdale and stuff like that, some decent places are offering. And it's, and it, and if, you know, if you want your society to become better, I mean, women are going to be voting. Women are going to be making purchase, like everyone's contributing to the sort of betterment or detriment of the, of the common good, so to speak, that it behooves you to want these people to be able to think. And if you just grow up in the public school system and then just barefoot and pregnant and never learn anything. I mean, that's, that's really not going to do much. Yeah. Well, lastly, I just want to mention this thing that he says, this is kind of like what I was talking about is that um, there's sort of a, a, a masculine homemaking aspect to his speech Yeah. where he says that um, part of what plagues our society is this lie that has been told to you. He's talking to men that you are not necessary in the home. The yeah. absence of men in the home is what plays a large role in the violence we see around the nation. Yeah. So he was he was calling the women back to home and also the men back to home. I don't, I don't know how much that got mentioned, that the men were called back home too. Uh, Kennedy, your final thoughts? I actually think some of the commentators called him racist for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course they did, right? Uh, because uh, I think they were, I mean, they, they saw it as a white supremacist dog whistle about oh, black crime or something, whatever. Stupid people say stupid things. Uh, but it's true. You know, and, and again, like in the Catechism of the Council of Trent, it talks about, it's the closest thing we have to something like an authoritative statement about the home economy, really, I think outside of the Bible, and uh, and some encyclicals from Pius XII, I think he talked about it, Leo XIII a bit too, but, but you know, Catechism of Council Trent is, is no lightweight document, and um, it talks about the roles of mothers, and they should love to be in the home, and all this kind of stuff, but then it also talks about the roles of fathers, and it exhorts them to virtue, and to, and, and, and provision, and, and those sorts of things, and, you know, my, I'll tell you a quick story, my father-in-law, very successful man in the world of finance, and, um, when he came out of his MBA program, we have a we have a school in Ontario called the Ivy League School Ivy School of Business. Not Ivy League; it's a different thing, but it's world renowned. Like it's up there with the the Ivy League schools and things like that. People come from all over the world. It's a very, very, very prestigious university for business education. And he got his MBA from there. And when he came out, he was near top of his class, so it was like headhunters were coming after him. You know, they wanted to work at this firm and that firm. And uh, you know, he had he had good 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 head on his shoulders, and he sat down at this one amazingly prestigious firm in Toronto for an interview and you know it's going to be big money and all this kind of stuff and that interview was all great and then he said I have one they said do you have any questions he said one final question he says how many of you have been divorced and every single man there had been divorced and you know he didn't say anything at that moment but it was like well I'm obviously not going to work here then because this is a place where and and that's but again he you know that wasn't because he was a trad it's just because he's a sane and believes in the goodness of family he is a practicing Catholic, but that's not the point. The point is, it was just from a natural perspective, my home life is at risk and I will lose my happiness that is most important to me, all for the pursuit of money, which is going to be split in half any when I have to pay child support. So, you know, men do need to think about their their families first and how their careers support their family, not how their career takes away. And I, so again, Harrison was c- correct. Someone must have helped him write this speech because if you really dissect it, it was perfect. It was nuanced in the real sense of the word. And uh, he said nothing wrong. And everything he said was bang on. There we go. All right. Yeah. But uh, I'll have to say go Lions at the end of uh, this. Go Bills. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Adios.